This is In Touch, news and information from the KLIF news team at Briarcliff College. Welcome to In Touch. I'm Kenny Keene. And I'm Molly Ramsey. In our first story, they're digging up pieces of a historical puzzle just outside the Sioux City limits. Reporter Aaron Lennick explains how progress sometimes has to be delayed in order to explore the past. Archaeologists from around the country have come to Sioux City to dig up ancient tribal remains. The Highway 75 bypass project is the location for the dig because all construction projects receiving federal or state funding must be searched for historical remains. Project archaeologist Toby Morrill says the people he has hired have all received a college education. These are professional working archaeologists. Uh, most of them have uh, at least completed their BA or BS degree in anthropology or a related field. Um, I've even got a few people with master's degrees uh, working for me. But this is this is what these people do for a living. That's their job. For one worker, this site is the largest and most detailed he has worked with. A lot of what we do is survey work in advance of highway construction and uh, unfortunately we don't get to dig sites uh, this interesting that often. The Great Oasis tribe wants settled here. Crew Field Chief Ron Mayer says the site is challenging to work with. Um, when you can get a isolated village site like this that's only been occupied for a hundred years or so, what we think has been, you get a lot of good information. We're just putting a small piece to a big puzzle together at a time here. And we'll see what happens at the end, how much of the puzzle we put together. After the archaeologists finished digging up this site in July, it will be turned over to the Iowa Department of Transportation, where they will continue work on the Highway 75 bypass project. That project is expected to be completed in the year 2001. Near Sioux City, Aaron Lennig, KLIF TV News. After nearly 30 years at the same location, a Sioux City music store is moving to a unique spot. Reporter Kristen Hansen has the details. Uncle John's CDs and tapes, which got its name from a Grateful Dead song when it opened in the 70s, will soon be moving from their West 3rd Street location to downtown Sioux City on historic 4th Street. Uncle John manager Mindy Brown says the move came about with the change of ownership of the store. Uh, when the new owner bought the store, uh, she really felt uh, this store had a large history here already. And I think everything has to change and, and grow if it's going to survive. And with the, with the new owner coming in, you know, the new blood, as it, as it were, uh, it just seemed appropriate to try to, to take it to the next, you know, the next step. Uh, I think Historic Four Street's going to develop into something pretty neat. Uh, they certainly need, needed something down there to get a lot of people in, and we felt like we could, you know, contribute that. Um, but it was something that the original owner also had often uh, tossed around in his mind that he would, in fact, the very building we're moving into, he had thought if he ever were to move, that's where he'd want to go. And when the new owner expressed that same idea, uh, it really just made a lot of sense. Besides moving to a different location, Brown says there will also be some new additions to the store. There's going to be a coffee bar. Uh, it's going to uh, uh, serve uh, all organic coffees and teas and, and, and nifty things like that and uh, going to have uh, music, uh, obviously. Uh, we're going to have some live music. Um, we're going to have some uh, theme nights and just a lot of things going on, a lot of more activities kind of going on around the store than, than just being a business open, you know, to, to sell you CDs. We're going to be doing things to, to promote different things. Um, New artwork, we've commissioned a new mural, like the, the mural on the ceiling, the same artist who did that is, is, is doing a brand new mural for us. To, this mural ended in about 1976, and we're kind of bringing that up to date. Um, so it's, it's going to be uh, a, all the same things that we have here now, but just more. Uncle John's CDs and tapes will soon be moving here on Historic 4th Street. New additions include a coffee bar and live entertainment. The move is expected to be completed by the middle of May. Kristen Hansen, KLIF, TV News, Sioux City. Members of the Briarcliff College community are expected to see many changes to the campus within 18 months. Kelly Townsend has the details in this report. 
Barcliffe College's Lawn Anticipated Student Center designs are completed. A member of the new Student Center Committee, Bob Fuller, says that because of the concerns from students and faculty, the original designs were sent back. The current designs for the Student Center are a vast improvement, according to Fuller, and have been accepted by those who have seen it. Well, uh, if you were to show it before and after, you would see considerably difference in the, uh, in the makeup of the buildings. Uh, the prior sketches that we had, the building looked almost like a bank. I heard someone say it looked like a mall. And uh, we sat down with the architect and said, we really want something that's going to fit into uh, the architecture that we have here on campus. And uh, I think we got that with the, uh, with the new sketches, with the new design, because it really does fit and looks like it belongs on the campus. The uh, plans right now, there's, there's going to be a variety of things in here. Obviously, uh, a new eating area, a new cafeteria, a new kitchen. Uh, we're looking at uh, some kind of a, uh, something like a pub, maybe a sports bar kind of thing. There'll be student lounges in there, uh, campus mail room, uh, art gallery, student activities offices, and then down on the, uh, on the end of it, we're going to uh, put a uh, multi-purpose uh, room so we can do a lot of different kinds of events into that, uh, into that one room. During the campaign rally, Briarcliff College showed the new designs of the Student Center and the Capital Campaign video to help those who were in attendance to donate money to help pay for the cost of the building the new Student Center and the renovations. An endowment fund would be given to pay for the maintenance of the new Student Center building. Kelly Townsend, KLAF TV News. Sioux City's historic 4th Street is attracting many different age groups with a new microbrewery and restaurant. KLIF's Molly Ramsey has the details in this report. This is the location of the new 4th Street Brewing Company. Sioux City's first ever brew pub is attracting people to historic 4th Street with its lineup of handcrafted beers and diverse menus. Owner Burt Collar says that the brewing company wants to supply every age group with a comfortable atmosphere. The brew pubs have uh, an atmosphere where anybody can feel comfortable here, even late into the evening. So our uh, age group, you know, it covers the whole uh, spectrum. Collar says that he knew from the start that 4th Street would be a prime location for the brew pub. Well, from looking at the, the, uh, the way the city's laid out and also understanding the character of the type of facility we wanted to create, there really was only one area. And this is Sioux City's historical district and centrally located, close to the interstate, uh, convention center, and those sorts of things. So it was really a natural location for us. The Brew Pub is open from 11.30 a.m. to midnight, Monday through Thursday, and 11.30 a.m. to 2 o'clock a.m., Fridays and Saturdays. The Brew Pub offers four different handcrafted beers that is brewed in a room behind the bar. With our opening, we have four of them, and uh, they range from our Subi uh, Honey Ale, which is our lightest um, uh, tasting beer, to our uh, famous Diving Elk Pale Ale, and our Irish Red, Spike Cowley Irish Red, and our Sergeant Stout. The Brew Pub is already looking ahead at making some changes to attract even more people to 4th Street. Collar says that the pub plans on putting a beer garden in the back and a games room in the basement. One thing is for sure, the 4th Street Brewery is working to create a positive and comfortable atmosphere for Sioux City. Molly Ramsey, KLIF TV News. A new attraction will be added to the Marion Center at Trinity Heights this summer. Reporter Kenny Keene visited the center off Floyd Boulevard and has this report. Trinity Heights is primarily known for its 30-foot statue of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Later this month, however, the Statue of Mary will be joined on the hill by another statue, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. According to the Executive Director of Trinity Heights, Beanie Cooper, the statue should help bring more visitors to the site. Well, it's really been an interesting phenomenon to watch the, the growth of the, of the whole project. Back in 1993, when we first set the, set the Statue of Mary, we were probably a rough estimate because we didn't do counting back in those days, but we were probably attracting uh, three or 4,000 people a year that would come up, both local and visitors and that type of thing. And, uh, let's say in 1995, we were drawing somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 20,000 visitors. Last year we had, uh, every state in the union was here, somebody from, we had them sign in, and we attracted 51,000 some odd people and uh, 38 countries, you know, foreign countries. Now, the Sacred Heart of Jesus statue 
gives you an ecumenical look that, that draws just that many more people. The project is ecumenical in its conception, even though it's Catholic in its, uh, from theology standpoint. Uh, we want to be a place for everybody. Dave Lamphere is the man who was commissioned as the sculptor for both statues, and he only had a short rest from his work after he finished the statue of Mary. Dale Lamphere, a relatively popular sculptor over in, in the um, South Dakota area, in Wyoming area, lives out of Sturgis, was found and commissioned to do the, the first statue of the Blessed Virgin. Uh, that was uh, right around in uh, 1990. Uh, it took him two years to do it. It was delivered in 1990, December of 1993 and uh, placed up here on what we call the Mound of Mary. Uh, within a year, we commissioned him to do the Sacred Heart of Jesus statue, which is to be 33 foot tall and uh, stainless steel, weigh about 11 ton, and uh, he's very close to, uh, to completion of that, and as we are getting close to completion of the area where we'll put it. The spot behind me will be the future site of the Sacred Heart of Jesus statue. The statue is nearing completion and should be placed here later this month. Kenny Keene, KLIF TV News, Sioux City. A Sioux City woman has been sharing her passion for the art of dance for more than 25 years now. KLIF reporter Christina Davilar visited the Sandy Keene School of Dance and has this report. Some say it's every little girl's dream to be a ballerina. For the past 25 years, Sandy Keene has been making those dreams a reality for her students. Sandy says her passion for dance began when she was three years old. When she got older, got married, and had children, she decided it was important for her children to learn the same dance skills as she did. A friend of mine asked me to teach her daughter, so I started in our home in the basement for the first year, and then I moved to a location at, uh, um, near town, downtown. We've done some social dancing, but I don't do a lot of that. And <clears throat> the adults, it's mainly ballet, jazz, and tap. And then I also used to teach at the senior center, too. But um, I did that for 15 years and, uh, and retired from that. I'm slowing down a little bit. And then I used to um, have the heel and drill team, too, but uh, for 15 years, but I, for 16 years, and I uh, retired from that also. Running a dance school keeps Sandy on her toes, literally and figuratively. Sandy not only teaches dance, but handles the book work as well. Well, just making sure that uh, um, finances are paid and that, that enough finances come in. So, I mean, it's like any other business. You worry about uh, um, keeping the place open. And for 25 years, there's been good and bad, so. Do you wear any special costumes? Yes. Can you tell me about some of your favorite costumes? Well, we have to do have a cat costume for this one, our ballet dance uh -huh. to the waltzing cat, and um. Can you tell me what that looks like? Um, it's a white cat outfit. Cool. And we might wear face makeup. Yes, for our 25th anniversary recital, we're going to have some former students come back that have been also assistants here at the studio. And we're going to uh, do um, a little bit of like river dance. We're going to attempt at it. So it's called Cry of the Celts. And there are five adult dancers that are the principal dancers. And then we are going to have the students from way back or whenever come back as many as possible. and. Um, do like three or four steps of it to join us and be part of it. So I'm looking forward to that. Keene says one of her greatest rewards is teaching the children of her former students. Christina Davilar, KLIF TV News. Briarcliff College has taken another step toward increasing the quality of their wrestling team. Reporter and wrestling team member Nathan Cass says a renovated facility is coming soon to the Briarcliff campus. <laughs> The Briarcliff College wrestlers will have a new place to call home next fall. The first year program will be leaving the Newman Flanagan Center, where they were practicing at a renovated racquetball court. Their new facility will be in Ground Tuller, where they hope to find many memories in their new facility being built this summer. 
with work to be completed this fall. Head wrestling coach Fred Kruger was granted $100,000 to use towards a new practice facility. Firecliff and Kruger decided on renovating the upper bound offices in Ground Toller, a move that will require a great deal of work. Well, we have to come in and tear out all the uh, interior walls of this, of this space right here. And uh, when we tear the interior walls down, we've got to move the heating uh, ducts and, and hang heaters from the ceiling. Plus, we've got to put in a, uh, a pretty good exhaust system so that uh, the uh, area will ventilate. And when we get all that done, uh, then we'll, we have new mats and stuff that are going to fit around the walls and, and around the pillars and everything. So it's quite extensive, actually, and quite costly for the college. The team will also get a new locker room to be built across the hall. The locker room will combine the existing men's and women's bathrooms as well as the maintenance office. Kruger has had little trouble with selling the new room to prospective wrestlers. I'll tell you, I uh, haven't had that bit of a problem. I've brought students over and showed them where the room is going to be and, and, and asked them to visualize the size and, and the scope of the room, and they haven't had a bit of problem with that. Uh, the recruiting part hasn't been tough at all. The Briarcliff Wrestling Program hopes this new home within Toller will be a bridge to a more permanent one, the record books. Nathan Cass, KLIF TV News. Briarcliff College, along with Siouxland volunteers, came together to educate students about maintaining good health in their lives. KLIF reporter Amy Tshack has the story. Recently, the health and wellness team at Briarcliff College sponsored an event. Many organizations from around the Siouxland area volunteered their time to participate. Carrie Shotner, the coordinator of the team, says, aside from being educated, students can also win prizes. On campus, um, there are different fines that are levied to, to students in the residence halls, um, and that money goes to the health and wellness team to do programming. So that's where it came. When students leave pizza boxes and garbage in the hallways and um, they get fined for it, that's where their money goes. So if they come today, they can get their money back. <laughs> I sent them letters back in February um, asking them if they would come, um, not charging them to come here, but really wanting them to come here to show our students um, that we, we really care, Briarcliff cares about, about the health of students. Among the exhibitors at the fair was St. Luke's Regional Hospital. St. Luke's dietitian Marie Nelson educated students about the nutritional levels of various fast food items. The reality is is that we are all eating at fast food restaurants probably more than once a week and people need to know, uh, be informed consumers and make informed choices about what they're eating. All foods can fit into a healthful eating style. There are no good foods, there are no bad foods, but some foods just might be lower in fat or lower in calories and it depends upon what your goal is. Aircliff students who were in attendance seemed to be having a good time while learning about health issues. The health and wellness team achieved its goal for the day. Amy Tishak, KLIF TV News. Skin cancer affects thousands of people each year, but it is preventable, as we see in this report from KLIF reporter Kristen Hansen. With summer almost here, people need to be prepared to guard against the sun's rays. Briarcliff College nurse Debbie Bond says every year thousands of Americans are diagnosed with skin cancer, which is due to We're excessive sun exposure. Cancer. Basically people with fair complexions, red, blonde hair, skin that freckles easily. Uh, this does not mean that people with darker skin cannot develop skin cancer, it's less common. However, it is possible. And people who had a history of childhood sunburns as well as people who have a family history of um, melanomas in their family have a higher incidence of developing skin cancer. One of the most common ways to prevent skin cancer would be to avoid the sun between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. when the ultraviolet rays are the strongest, uh, to wear protective clothing and sunscreen at 15 SPF or higher, as well as uh, sunscreens that contain PABA, P-A-B-A. -A. Uh, that ingredient tends to absorb ultraviolet rays and allows for more ta gradual tanning, as well as avoiding tanning parlors and sun lamps. There are signs to look for to detect skin cancer. Bond says in many cases skin cancer is treatable. Um, however, there are things that you can look for yourself and one is if a mole changes in size, shape, or color, if you have an unusual growth, if skin changes color in certain spots, or if um, you have a sore that won't heal, you need to consult with your doctor. Though it does look nice to have that golden tan, it can often have negative, even deadly effects. Kristen Hansen, KLIF, TV News. 
Along with its recent makeover, the Sioux City City Hall building has also achieved some technological advances. Tuwele Tuwele has the details in this report. As you might have noticed the facelift on City Hall, you only saw the outside features. Inside is a state-of-the-art audiovisual technology, which features remote control cameras, video editing, audio editing, and touch screen controls. The person in charge of this equipment is training director Cindy O'Kane. The idea behind it was to establish a state-of-the-art system for viewing council meetings in particular. And it, I don't know if you can see all of this. Maybe I should move this way. Sorry. Um, but we have a system here um, that is hooked up to five cameras on um, the council chambers, hooked to what we call the bus. Um, the system is hooked directly to Siouxland Cablecom, so we can broadcast um, the council meetings. And this is supposed to be really state-of-the-art. I'm, I'm kind of a novice um, at this. But what we can do is we can um, pick up um, anything anywhere in the council chambers. Whereas before, uh, when we broadcast council meetings, there was one camera. We had to haul it around. Uh, the news stations can come in and plug into our audio and visual hookups out there. So they don't have to haul cameras here. They just plug their pack in out there. Um, and it's, it's really a, a, a good system as far as um, you know, broadcasting the council meetings because you can switch. We have um, a Chiron system that puts their, their names up there. Um, it, it's just a really fun system. And like I said, I don't know everything there is to know about it, but it, it, it sure is a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so the, the system is hooked up to five cameras out there. What shows up on that picture, that's the live camera. This is the setup camera. Um, what shows up out there shows up also on the big screen. We have a big screen projector out there, and the council members have individual projectors uh, because we also have an overhead camera our document cameras, so when someone has something that they want to show to the council, they can lay it down on the desk out there and it projects on the big screen and it projects on a monitor. Um, usually we had little slides or we'd hold up pictures and <laughs> it's very hard, difficult to see. So it's really a state-of-the-art um, broadcast center. Um, O'Kane says the newly installed audiovisual technology is so advanced they've yet to learn its full capabilities. This is Tuele Tuele, KLIF Television News at City Hall. The Dorothy Pico Nature Center is working harder to allow more people access to its resources during the summer season. Reporter Molly Ramsey has that story. As summer's wave of sunlight approaches, the Dorothy Peacoat Nature Center is extending their hours to give Sioux City residents more opportunities to visit. Naturalist Don Chapman says that summertime is the Nature Center's busiest season. We have a lot of an increased visitors that come in the summertime, coming out in the evening with the, the daylight um, being extended, the hours. So we're, we're hoping that uh, we catch more of those people that want to come out after work and bring their families and are able to come out and hike the trails. Um, normally, we, during our winter hours, we don't have as high as a visitation, so we're, we're increasing that during the, the good time of year when people want to be outside so they can get a chance to see the building and the facility. The Nature Center's name was recently changed from the Lois Ridge Nature Center to the Dorothy Peacoat Nature Center due to a monetary donation from the Peacoat family. Chapman says that although the name has changed, the Nature Center is still top of the line at entertaining both adults and kids. The Dorothy Pico Nature Center has a variety of different hands-on exhibits in our Junior League Legacy Gallery. And with that, we have um, a variety of animal furs and skulls and different um, feathers and lots of other hands-on touch touching things, t tactile things for the kids to explore. They can also look at some of our um, live animals we have here. We have some resident animals, some snakes and some turtles and some fish, some bees, and those are real popular exhibits. Um, many of our exhibits are centered around the Los Hills theme, so even though our name has changed, we still have the same mission in that we're educating people and, and about the Los Hills and their importance and how we can uh, help protect them. During the summertime rush, the Nature Center seems to be the place to go for field trips. Chapman says that the tour guides spend most of their time with kids showing off the Nature Center's beautiful resources. Uh, they always love to get out and hike and uh, are always wishing they can go more on the trails. And then they also like the live animals and really enjoy that. Okay. 
Due to the nice summer weather and the variety of things to do indoors and outdoors at the Dorothy Peacoat Nature Center, many different age groups are attracted here. Molly Ramsey, KLIF TV News. Next, we'll take a look at how one man finds a way during work to help educate and inform local youth. For more on this story, here's reporter Nathan Cass. The Sergeant Floyd Welcome Center sign may be deceiving. There are many other items other than just postcards and coffee cups. The top two floors were given to the city for whatever they deemed useful. They decided to display the city's history. From Native American artifacts to Lewis and Clark Expedition in the building of steamboats on the Missouri River. The favorite exhibit is rumored to be a life-size replica of Sergeant Floyd. Making the exhibits come to life, though, is Welcome Center Supervisor Blair She Quinn. She Quinn spends a great deal of his spare time working on model ships that used to travel the Missouri. On the top deck, there are at least two riverboat models that we, I can work on on and off up there. Uh, I'm also working at home on some special models for uh, some keelboat models. We, uh, we, uh, I have a little different type of a job situation. I take my work home with me. I work on what I can here with the tools that we have in our little shop. And then on certain, with certain materials, such as the larger models, which are wooden, I, I construct those at home. Uh, so there's a number of models under construction. She Quinn thrives on sharing his knowledge of the city's heritage with children that take class trips to the boat. As part of our presentation for the school kids, we will serve up buffalo jerky and hardtack so they can taste the expedition. We'll have them put on the clothes so they can feel the expedition. Uh, we also at times will take a, uh, a musket out and after I've demonstrated, oh, after we've demonstrated how a flint and steel works and have them help make a fire, we take the concept one step further and show how a flint and steel worked for obtaining the food of the expedition, which is by hunting, and we'll even take a musket out back. And of course, everyone likes smoke and noise, and it's, a, it's a, always a cheap trick, but the hope always is that 20, 30 years from now, they'll remember a visit to this facility. And that one plan he has this summer for the Welcome Center is working with disadvantaged youth. A major activity was just uh, really uh, we were committed to this week was in becoming involved with, say, disadvantaged uh, young people, providing a summer project, and that will be something rather unique in that we're going to be building boats, full-size canoes here on the, uh, on the riverfront, down, down between here in our, in our Simarina. So we are getting back to the river. Though high and dry now, Blair She Quinn still finds a use for this old boat, a rescue boat for today's youth. Nathan Cass, KLIF News, Sioux City, Iowa. With a look at how a downtown Sioux City organization benefits small businesses and shoppers alike, here's reporter Kenny Keene. Main Street Sioux City is a downtown promotion organization that works for the property owners. According to the director of Main Street, Dave Anderson, its purpose is to provide a lively, energetic environment. We work with property owners uh, to, to improve their storefronts. Uh, we, uh, we have a lending program to help businesses either uh, get started or expand. And uh, we've uh, uh, really been involved in a number of public issues. Uh, uh, in the uh, regulation of, of parking so that uh, we have more plentiful parking, um, sign ordinance uh, regulations, and things like that, in order to just make the development of business in downtown uh, a, a, better, uh, a better experience and, and more possible. Among other downtown renovations will be the old Cameo Theaters, which will be the site for new low-income housing. Um, there is a housing and commercial development that will take place with Cameo and Fiscal, so that came right out of the Rudat project. Uh, and, uh, and now we're proceeding with some design and conceptual elements of the 4th Street Corridor that uh, is, is meant to link the, the whole 4th Street Corridor from the historic district all the way to Wesley Way. Aside from renovations, Main Street is also involved in promotions, such as the one this summer called June Jam. The promotions director of Main Street, Dee Pollock, says that the event should attract all age groups. It is designed to highlight local talent, local artists, uh, we'll have a variety of music, blues, jazz, country, uh, hip-hop for the younger kids. And we're also going to highlight local artists as far as potters and painters and things like that. It's an opportunity for nonprofit organizations to come down, do fundraisers, 
for example, face painting or balloons for the younger kids. It's uh, designed for a free community event just to bring people to downtown Sioux City and let us know that we're here. With renovations and promotions such as these, Main Street should continue to help improve the atmosphere in downtown Sioux City. Kenny Keene, KLIF News. The Briarcliff College Theater Department is preparing for another performance with an unusual comedy line. Julie Weeder has this story. The Briarcliff Theater Department is busy preparing for their production of the comedy, The Doctor, in spite of himself. Director Richard Poole says it promises to provide lots of laughs for the audience. This is a play that deals uh, with the 17th century author Moliere who wrote it. It's really the Marx Brothers, the Three Stooges, the Ritz Brothers. Yummy, 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 yummy. It's a lot of uh, wonderful farce, body action. I have terrific actors. The sets will be spectacular, as will the costumes. You come to this because you will laugh like you've never laughed before. Dan McDermott is a senior at Briarcliff and is cast in the lead role. McDermott says this play is different from past productions at Briarcliff. Uh, I like it because it's, it's straight up comedy. And uh, we do a lot of things uh, since my freshman, we've done a lot of things that were very serious and kind of foreboding and people left here like, what was that all about? And I think this show, they'll come, they'll, th by the intermission, they'll be walking out of here laughing, saying, this is just so funny stuff. And I just love it. It's, it's a lot of physical shtick, as Richard would say, and I just love it. That's something I love about it. The play is set in present time, but will feature 17th century costumes. Director of costuming Deb Lotsoff says she coordinated with the lighting director to plan a color scheme for the costumes and set. This, we've been talking about this, the, the whole design concept, because of course the scenery and the costumes have to go together, since probably about the beginning of the year, maybe even into last spring. And we have, and this is, this is a really fun thing, talking ideas, talking concepts, figuring out how things are going to look, how things are going to mesh together, throwing out ideas, letting them simmer, saying, no, we don't think that's going to work, and then finally arriving at it. The Doctor, in spite of himself, is one of three annual productions the Briarcliff Theater Department performs. Julie Weeder, KLIF News. There's no better time to go check out the Big Chill at the Southern Hills Mall. A historic exhibit fit for both young and old is in store. Tuelli Tuelli was there. After 10,000 years of extinction, the creatures of the Ice Age are back. The Southern Hills Mall in Sioux City is showing off these extinct creatures at the Ice Age Cometh exhibit. This educational event features life-size robotic creatures such as the woolly mammoth and saber-toothed tiger. Mall marketing director Chris Walters says she hopes the public learn something from this exhibit. It's an event, you know, for um, the whole family, and we have um, a signage, you know, for each of the creature units so that um, that people can, you know, learn a little bit about these creatures, you know, when they live, what types of things do they eat, um, um, and so forth. Learn a little bit more about the ice ages. Um, you know, so it's really, like I said, you know, for the whole family to bring out their children and, you know, kind of take them back in time a little bit. Ice Age Cometh is a second large-scale family entertainment event hosted by the Southern Hills Mall. Like last year's dinosaur invasion, the Ice Age exhibit tours the nation's science centers and museums. Another similar exhibit featuring giant insects will be at the Southern Hills Mall August 7th to September 7th. The Ice Age Cometh will conclude on June 7th. This is Tuelli Tuelli, KLIF TV News. Along with Molly Ramsey, I'm Kenny Keene. Thank you for joining us for another edition of In Touch.